Today's video is for all you guys stuck at home, bored, need something to do. We're talking go kart maintenance. Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be stepping you through all the maintenance things that you can do at home while you have some free time on your hand, talking April 2020. So in today's video, we're going to be stepping you through five sort of key areas of the go-kart that you can maintain at home. We're only going to be touching lightly on those areas. If you want a more in-depth version of what you see today, you can head over to our website and check out Racing Rituals, where we have maintenance videos on all the things that we talk about here in depth and for the month of April we're running a 50% discount so everybody can learn how to do this at home. So if you punch in the code CV19 you'll get a 50% discount at the checkout. So we're going to go over the brake system. What you want to do is check your brake fluid level in the master cylinder, double check all your hardware and bleed the brake system. Now we cover different brake systems on our YouTube channel and you can check out those videos in the description below. So you can check all your nuts and bolts here. We've obviously got a um, brake rod here. You've got locking bolts. This is a Tony Kart setup that's set up for a little driver. You can crack your brake master cylinder reservoir. This is on the new Tony Kart system. And we can just double check our brake fluid. This is a brand new cart. But if your cart is over a few months old, treat yourself to some new brake fluid and give yourself a brake bleed. You know, we covered those in a couple of videos too, so you can check those out in the description below. Also too, these brake stoppers can come loose over time, the, these nuts, and then they can start to jack our brakes on. So while you've put in the new brake fluid, you might as well bleed it through. Do it now. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and give us a thumbs up while you're there. Okay, so now the cart's sitting around for a couple of months. What we're gonna do is make sure that we disconnect all the batteries and put them on charge. So as a minimum, you want to remove your two terminals from the harness, take the battery out of the, the battery cradle, and stick your battery on charge. And while you're at it, get your micron battery out, and give it a charge so it's ready to go when you hit the track. So the next key area to check is your fuel delivery system. What you want to do is you want to check out your fuel line and fuel filter. Now, if you haven't replaced those for a while, call up your local cart shop and order one and get it sent out because it's a nice easy one to do in the garage. While you're at it, take the carburetor off the go-kart and drain all the fuel out. If the carburetors are sitting around for too long, the fuel actually evaporates out through the breather hose and you can get some residual gum. And then it's a real mission to clean your carburetor and it can give you some drama at the track. So take your carby off and give it a carburetor service. Now we do have videos on all carburetors, Tillotson, Rotax and the Vortex Mini Rock. You can check those out on YouTube so feel free to search for those or hit the link in the description below. My least favorite job of cleaning your go-kart is the chain and sprocket, but it's super critical. It gets very dirty, obviously, from the chain lube, plus all the grit from around the circuit. So they need constant maintenance. What I do is pull the chain off, run it through my hands with some degrees and a rag, and also, it's a bit of a consumable. So don't be scared when you buy new tires, buy yourself a new chain. These things cost time, chew horsepower, especially when they're worn. So make sure they're in the best condition you can get. So now that you've checked your brakes, checked the fuel system, charged the batteries, cleaned the chain and the sprocket, ordered all the parts that you need to replace, the last thing I want you to do is go over the car with your 13 and your 10 mil spanner and check every nut and bolt. Make sure they're tight and there's no damage. So while you're checking your nuts and bolts, very important is to check your wheel alignment. As a bare minimum, double check that your rose joints are all tight and your tie rods aren't bent. And if you've got laser wheel liners, now's the time to crack them out, double check your wheel alignment. Now the last thing you can do before you store your cart is to lube everything. Now the pipe and the axle rust almost overnight. So here in Queensland and anywhere where there's a lot of humidity, and especially if you live near the sea, you want to make sure you use something heavier than WD-40 to keep the axle from rusting. Now what I recommend is either two-stroke oil or some grease. If you can do all those things, the cart's going to be ready to go into storage. The engine, it can sit with no fuel and oil in it for long periods of time. There's so much oil residual inside the engine. If it's sitting here like this, 
or on a vertical cart stand, as long as you take the petrol out of the fuel tank and the carburetor, you can stand your cart up against the wall, put a sheet over it, and when it's ready to go again in a couple of weeks, months time, put the batteries in it, put some fresh fuel, hit the go button, and you're on the track. So there you have it. That's how you're gonna maintain your cart for a short stint on the sidelines. Now, if you're liking this video and you'd like to see more in-depth explanations of any of the stuff you've seen here today, you can check out our Racing Rituals tutorial series on our website. For all those guys that have been asking for t-shirts, our merchandise store is back a full percentage, 100%. And we now ship internationally. So head on over to www.parapublic.com.au, grab yourself a new t-shirt. If you guys have got any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section below. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say thanks to everyone that has subscribed and turned on the notifications and giving us a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Also too, while we're at it, I'd really like to make sure everyone's safe and sound in these trying conditions. And a huge shout out to all the people that are putting in the extra effort to keep us safe. Thanks for watching, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.